January 4. The Tower of Babel. At one time, all the people of the world spoke the same language and used the same words. As the people migrated to the east, they found a plain in the land of Babylonia and settled there. They began saying to each other, Let's make bricks and harden them with fire. In this region, bricks were used instead of stone, and tar was used for mortar. Then they said, Come, let's build a great city for ourselves, with a tower that reaches into the sky. This will make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. But the Lord came down to look at the city and the tower the people were building. Look, he said, the people are united, and they all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. Come, Let's go down and confuse the people with different languages. Then they won't be able to understand each other. In that way, the Lord scattered them all over the world, and they stopped building the city. That is why the city was called Babel, because that is where the Lord confused the people with different languages. In this way, he scattered them all over the world. From Shem to Abram. This is the account of Shem's family. Two years after the great flood, when Shem was one hundred years old, he became the father of Arphaxad. After the birth of Arphaxad, Shem lived another five hundred years and had other sons and daughters. When Arphaxad was thirty-five years old, he became the father of Shelah. After the birth of Shelah, Arphaxad lived another four hundred and three years and had other sons and daughters. When Shelah was thirty years old, he became the father of Eber. After the birth of Eber, Shelah lived another 403 years and had other sons and daughters. When Eber was 34 years old, he became the father of Peleg. After the birth of Peleg, Eber lived another 430 years and had other sons and daughters. When Peleg was 30 years old, he became the father of Reu. After the birth of Reu, Peleg lived another 209 years and had other sons and daughters. When Reu was thirty-two years old, he became the father of Sirug. After the birth of Sirug, Reu lived another two hundred and seven years and had other sons and daughters. When Sirug was thirty years old, he became the father of Nahor. After the birth of Nahor, Sirug lived another two hundred years and had other sons and daughters. When Nahor was twenty-nine years old, he became the father of Tira. After the birth of Tira, Nahor lived another 119 years and had other sons and daughters. When Tira was 70 years old, he had become the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. So this is the family line descended from Shem. Our facts add Shelah, Eber, Peleg, Ru, Sirug, Nahor, Tira, and Abram, later known as Abraham. The Family of Tira. This is the account of Terah's family. Terah was the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran was the father of Lot. But Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans, the land of his birth, while his father Terah was still living. Meanwhile, Abram and Nahor both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah. Milcah and her sister Iscah were daughters of Nahor's brother Haran. But Sarai was unable to become pregnant and had no children. One day, Terah took his son Abram, his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife, and his grandson Lot, his son Haran's child, and moved away from Ur of the Chaldeans. He was headed for the land of Canaan, but they stopped at Haran and settled there. The Call of Abram The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your native country your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram departed, as the Lord had instructed, and Lot went with him. Abram was seventy-five years old when he left Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all his wealth, his livestock, and all the people he had taken into his household at Haran, and headed for the land of Canaan. When they arrived in Canaan, Abram traveled through the land as far as Shechem. There he set up camp beside the oak of Morah. At that time, the area was inhabited by Canaanites. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give this land to your descendants. And Abram built an altar there and dedicated it to the Lord, who had appeared to him. 
After that, Abram traveled south and set up camp in the hill country, with Bethel to the west and Ai to the east. There he built another altar and dedicated it to the Lord, and he worshipped the Lord. Then Abram continued traveling south by stages toward the Negev. Abram and Sarai in Egypt At that time a severe famine struck the land of Canaan, forcing Abram to go down to Egypt, where he lived as a foreigner. As he was approaching the border of Egypt, Abram said to his wife Sarai, Look, you are a very beautiful woman. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife, let's kill him, then we can have her. So please tell them you are my sister. Then they will spare my life and treat me well because of their interest in you. And sure enough, when Abram arrived in Egypt, everyone spoke of Sarai's beauty. When the palace officials saw her, they sang her praises to Pharaoh, their king, and Sarai was taken into his palace. Then Pharaoh gave Abram many gifts because of her, sheep, goats, cattle, male and female donkeys, male and female servants, and camels. But the Lord sent terrible plagues upon Pharaoh and his household because of Sarai, Abram's wife. So Pharaoh summoned Abram and accused him sharply. What have you done to me? he demanded. Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister and allow me to take her as my wife? Now then, here is your wife. Take her and get out of here. Pharaoh ordered some of his men to escort them, and he sent Abram out of the country along with his wife and all his possessions. Abram and Lot Separate So Abram left Egypt and traveled north into the Negev, along with his wife and Lot and all that they owned. Abram was very rich in livestock, silver, and gold. From the Negev they continued traveling by stages toward Bethel, and they pitched their tents between Bethel and Ai, where they had camped before. This was the same place where Abram had built the altar, and there he worshipped the Lord again. Lot, who was traveling with Abram, had also become very wealthy with flocks of sheep and goats, herds of cattle, and many tents. But the land could not support both Abram and Lot, with all their flocks and herds living so close together. So disputes broke out between the herdsmen of Abram and Lot. At that time, Canaanites and Perizzites were also living in the land. Finally, Abram said to Lot, Let's not allow this conflict to come between us or our herdsmen. After all, we are close relatives. The whole countryside is open to you. Take your choice of any section of the land you want, and we will separate. If you want the land to the left, then I'll take the land on the right. If you prefer the land on the right, then I'll go to the left. Lot took a long look at the fertile plains of the Jordan Valley in the direction of Zoar. The whole area was well watered everywhere, like the garden of the Lord or the beautiful land of Egypt. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot chose for himself the whole Jordan Valley to the east of them. He went there with his flocks and servants and parted company with his uncle Abram. So Abram settled in the land of Canaan, and Lot moved his tents to a place near Sodom and settled among the cities of the plain. But the people of this area were extremely wicked and constantly sinned against the Lord. After Lot had gone, the Lord said to Abram, Look as far as you can see in every direction, north and south, east and west. I am giving all this land as far as you can see to you and your descendants as a permanent possession. And I will give you so many descendants that like the dust of the earth they cannot be counted. Go and walk through the land in every direction, for I am giving it to you. So Abram moved his camp to Hebron and settled near the oak grove belonging to Mamre. There he built another altar to the Lord. Abram rescues Lot. About this time, war broke out in the region. King Amraphel of Babylonia, King Arioch of Eleser, King Cadoleomer of Elam, and King Tidal of Goyim fought against King Bera of Sodom, King Bersha of Gomorrah, King Shinab of Adma, King Shem-Eber of Zeboim, and the King of Bela, also called Zoar. The second group of kings joined forces in Siddim Valley, that is, the Valley of the Dead Sea. For twelve years they had been subject to King Cadoleomer, but in the thirteenth year they rebelled against him. One year later, Cadoleomer and his allies arrived and defeated the Rephaites at Ashtaroth Kerneum, the Zuzites at Ham, the Emites at Sheva Kiriatheum, and the Horites at Mount Seir. 
as far as El Paran at the edge of the wilderness. Then they turned back and came to En Mishpat, now called Kadesh, and conquered all the territory of the Amalekites and also the Amorites living in Hazazan Tamar. Then the rebel kings of Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, Zeboim, and Bela, also called Zoar, prepared for battle in the Valley of the Dead Sea. They fought against King Cadoleomer of Elam, King Tidal of Goyim, King Amraphel of Babylonia, and King Arioch of Eleser, four kings against five. As it happened, the valley of the Dead Sea was filled with tar pits, and as the army of the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, some fell into the tar pits, while the rest escaped into the mountains. The victorious invaders then plundered Sodom and Gomorrah and headed for home, taking with them all the spoils of war and the food supplies. They also captured Lot, Abram's nephew who lived in Sodom, and carried off everything he owned. But one of Lot's men escaped and reported everything to Abram the Hebrew, who was living near the oak grove belonging to Mamre the Amorite. Mamre and his relatives Eshcol and Aner were Abram's allies. When Abram heard that his nephew Lot had been captured, he mobilized the 318 trained men who had been born into his household. Then he pursued Cadoleomer's army until he caught up with them at Dan. There he divided his men and attacked during the night. Cadoleomer's army fled, but Abram chased them as far as Hoba, north of Damascus. Abram recovered all the goods that had been taken, and he brought back his nephew Lot with his possessions and all the women and other captives. Melchizedek Blesses Abram After Abram returned from his victory over Cadoleomer and all his allies, the king of Sodom went out to meet him in the valley of Sheva, that is, the king's valley. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem, and a priest of God Most High, brought Abram some bread and wine. Melchizedek blessed Abram with this blessing. Blessed be Abram by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has defeated your enemies for you. Then Abram gave Melchizedek a tenth of all the goods he had recovered. The king of Sodom said to Abram, Give back my people who were captured, but you may keep for yourself all the goods you have recovered. Abram replied to the king of Sodom, I solemnly swear to the Lord God Most High, creator of heaven and earth, that I will not take so much as a single thread or sandal thong from what belongs to you. Otherwise you might say, I am the one who made Abram rich. I will accept only what my young warriors have already eaten, and I request that you give a fair share of the goods to my allies, Aner, Eshkel, and Mamre.